right. Well, the the recording has started. I'd, I'd like to thank everyone and the, for joining and uh, welcome everyone to the, the 2020 CABA annual general meeting. Uh, and I'll, with that, I'll, I'll pass it off to Ron Zimmer, the CABA president, to go over the agenda and, uh, and introduce uh, Stephen Becker, the chairman of the, the CABA board. You know, thanks very much, uh, Greg. Uh, Greg Walker is our um, research director, and uh, we really appreciate everybody, as Greg said, uh, joining this particular uh, CAB AGM. Uh, we do this annually, and uh, we do it. We traditionally do it by webinar, and this year, and unlike uh, or like many other events, it's uh, vir coming to you virtually. And uh, which is great because our members are spread throughout the world. Uh, we actually uh, have about uh, 375 member organizations. We'll talk about that and close to 30,000 industry contacts that work with CABA now. So before you, you have uh, the agenda, but I'm going to turn it over to uh, our chairman of the board. Uh, we're really blessed uh, to have a strong board and, uh, and a very strong uh, chairman of the board uh, from Kimberly Clark Professional. Stephen Becker. Stephen, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate that. And yes, uh, just, just wanted to welcome everyone uh, to this 2020 general membership uh, annual meeting. Um, and just wanted to offer a few words kind of reflecting on the year as we get going here. And, and Ron and the team will take us through a, a great uh, a great review. So, I mean, as no shock to anyone on this call, this past year has been just utterly, utterly unique. Um, and and I just wanted to say, even amongst all those challenges, um, this team and this organization have managed to weather these challenges in a way that I can say I'm truly proud of. Uh, Ron and his staff have made the necessary adjustments and pivots to keep the impact of the global pandemic to a minimum. Um, so just want to make uh, a, a very public uh, appreciation and congratulations to the team. Very proud of, of how you as a staff have stepped up to all those challenges. And, you know, Kind of reflecting on this pandemic and the one thing that has challenged nearly every organization is how to work in new ways, how to create value through new services, and to, to be resolute in delivering on your goals. Um, what we want to share with you today will reflect this, uh, this year's performance, but also show you and our membership how we are leaning into new ways of working and operating. Ron and the team will walk us through some of these, and many of them are a direct reflection on how we must and will be embracing digital tools, increasing collaboration across our industry, and continuing to grow CABA um, as a leader of research, knowledge, and insights within the intelligent buildings community. So uh, welcome, everybody. And uh, with that, Ron, I think we can get going. All right. Next slide. As we look at uh, CABA, uh, first and foremost, uh, we've been really, uh, uh, as Stephen has indicated, working diligently to, uh, and we have for over 30 years now, uh, worked uh, at providing the very best uh, research information and bringing people together in the um, world of integrated systems in the built sector. And that includes all buildings, uh, connected homes, uh, to intelligent buildings and uh, industrial buildings and everything in between. So the board had met uh, earlier this year, uh, traditionally every four to five years, the board reviews and gives a critical um, uh, natural face-to-face -face meeting that took place at, during the National Association of Home Builders event, uh, the International Builders Show and the Kitchen and Bath uh, Industry Show, and worked really diligently with an outside consultant group and um, really rolled up the sleeves and engaged and came up with a uh, revised vision, mission, and goals. And we'll go through that in a little more detail. This uh, will be posted. Uh, so if you're taking notes or want to refer back to something, this will be posted in our presentation page of the CABA website, so you will be able to uh, review it and it's being recorded, so uh, you'll be able to listen to it or share it with others in your organization. Next slide. As we get into the uh, very uh, more detail of the strategic and operational plan, um, and I'm not going to go through this uh, line by line, uh, it'll be there for your review, but it's really to show and illustrate that the board has taken uh, and the organization is taking a very deliberate and conscientious uh, step to develop a kind of actionable or quality content 
that is really relevant to not just the members, but to the industry as a whole. And we've laid out some very key uh, objectives and tasks and uh, KPIs that uh, we're working towards and we'll be able to monitor and then make adjustments. Uh, it's very uh, dynamic and, and, uh, and fluid in that uh, we can uh, make adjustments as the, as the industry changes, as uh, things like COVID-19 hit us uh, to better serve with the resources we have, both human and financial. Next slide. One of the key aspects of it is to really ensure that we have a, a very effective content management system and that uh, allows us to provide the very best user experience. And you're going to hear about it a little bit later and so with some specific examples, but uh, CABA had undertaken even prior to COVID-19 uh, steps to upgrade our website and our uh, database, um, two very major steps. And we uh, launched it in July with the new uh, website and, uh, and about the same time, the, the database. And we've been really, really pleased and some great comments coming back. But we're measuring it, we're changing it, we're modifying it, and we're looking for feedback from our members. Next slide. The key part of what we are always trying to do is increase that awareness of what CABA is and what's happening in our industry uh, to the uh, intelligent built environments as to the entire built sector worldwide. And it's, uh, it's quite a challenge to follow all the changes because the change is happening so quickly now. And that's one of the real values that CABA brings to the industry because uh, how do you in your busy day-to-day -day lives, how do you stay on top of all the change to ensure that you're making the right decisions, uh, making recommendations to senior management? We can help you with that. Next slide. And the, and the big part of what CABA has done for, uh, I've been here almost 20, just over 23 years. And basically the work that we've done is really tried to foster collaboration. And um, I think some of the people on this call uh, we'll know that uh, that's a big part of what CABA has uh, been about and has been working towards, uh, whether it's collaborating with other uh, industry organizations that are doing protocols and standards, uh, uh, industry groups like IFMA, BOMA International, uh, end user groups, the American Institute of Architects, and, and so many others, um, working with the thought leaders and organizations. But collaboration can take place in things like uh, our research and uh, we're very unique in that in the industry and, and that brings added value. So collaboration is huge, very big, and we will continue to uh, strive for that. And we encourage for uh, groups out there, and maybe if they're uh, non-members on this call, if you uh, uh, have an opportunity, by, we encourage you to contact us and we'd be pleased to talk to you. Next slide. This gets into some of our traditional bylaw requirements uh, for the organization as we move forward through this say, AGM, which the minutes are being taken. So we, uh, uh, one of the items is to have, approve a motion for the audited financial statement. And um, I can say that uh, with COVID-19 and other uh, things that arose over the past year, our year end is June 30th actually, we uh, had a small deficit. Uh, we're very fortunate that over the years we have built up a contingency reserve, which we dip into when we do have a uh, net loss. But uh, by and large, uh, we uh, have done uh, extremely well uh, as an organization through some troubling times. So the motion is there. Uh, Stephen, do you want to handle the motion? And yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I I'll, think I'll, this I'll, is. I'll take think, the notes. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. I think this is right. As I mentioned, you know, this is a tough year. I think we performed uh, admirably in the in the face of the challenges. And with that, I'd like to call for a motion that the audited uh, financial results for CABA for this past year, 2019 to 2020, uh, be approved. Do we have any movers? Hey, Katz, I move to approve them. Thank you. We have a second. This is Doreen, I'll second. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Um, all opposed? Any, any opposals? Okay, without that, uh, motion passes. Thank you yep. very much. Next slide. 
the other uh, part of it, of course, we uh, have we are scrutinized uh, uh, to the nth degree, <laughs> uh, and uh, as uh, as should be, uh, the um, work of Parker Prince Labano, chartered accountants, do a great job in our audit process. And uh, again, Stephen, I'll turn it over to you to uh, ask for this motion. Sure. Yeah, I'd like to to call for that motion to continue with Parker Prince Labano as our accountants to perform our audit for this uh, coming year of 2021. Do I have a mover? There's got to be some board members on here. Do we have a, <laughs> do we have a mover? I don't know them, so I can't move them. <laughs> Yeah, well, we've been using them for several years, I believe, oh, right, Ron? You know, I've been a member for over 20 yeah. years, so I move that they be accepted, David Katz. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Do we have everybody muted except David? No, I'm just teasing, David. <laughs> Thank you. I want to the good stuff. There's a seconder. Just to introduce yourself, so I... Whoever seconded, just uh, let me know who you are. Sorry, I didn't hear the name of the person who seconded. Uh, just I, don't, I don't think anyone seconded. It. Oh, <laughs> we're still waiting. Yeah, Ron. Right. Do we have a second, please? <laughs> okay. I thought there was a seconder. Hey, Stephen, this is Dave Kaufman of Zidio. I'll go ahead and second it. Oh, Thank you, David. I, thanks, David. Yep. One, of our, one of our board members. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, so, Stephen, do you want to just finish it off with the... Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'll, uh, any, any opposals? I don't hear any. Okay. Um, with that motion passes, we'll continue with our partners yep. uh, for audits in 2021. Thank you very much. Perfect. Next slide. So, uh, we have been blessed, uh, truly blessed uh, over the years by uh, the support and um, leadership of uh, so many great organizations and people who give up with their time and actually uh, pay a, a larger fee to be on our board. And uh, that helps uh, subsidize and keep our membership fees lower for everybody else. So uh, this is the current brands of all of the uh, people that are currently on our board. And if we just go to the next slide, we uh, have in fact uh, currently 24 organizations and we do have uh, uh, limits in terms so people do drop off uh, the board and there will be uh, there's some open seats actually coming up um, in the new year so if uh, quite frankly if there are people on the call that have an interest in serving as and it's always the organization that is the member that would be the representative and that they, they choose who would be the uh, their representative on our board and uh, we again have a very diverse uh, group uh, and I'm just so delighted uh, with the type of companies and people uh, most recently uh, we added uh, Automated Logic Corporation, uh, Belimo Americas and Graybar I think the first distributor we've ever had so uh, great to see all these companies uh, supporting and organizations supporting CABA at the board level so with that I'll turn it back to Stephen for a motion uh, yeah, so can we uh, get a mover to, um, to appoint these 24 represent representatives and uh, organizations uh, to be, continue to be appointed at the board of directors for Cabo? Do you have a mover? Yes, yeah, Stephen, Dave Kaufman again from Residio. I'll go ahead and move that. Thank Thanks, you. David. Can I have a second? David Katz, the two Davids, all seconded. <laughs> Appreciate you too. Okay. Uh, uh, any opposed? All right. Okay, with that, uh, motion passes. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm looking for a continued growth. It's, got, it's a good group of folks here at the board that uh, really is driving us in the right direction. So thank, thanks to all to contribute. Yeah, and, and to add to that, so what Stephen just said, we have a very active board and some boards are there in name only. And I can tell you, uh, we can move uh, uh, forward. Yeah, so we were very delighted that 
this is a very active board uh, involved, as you can see on various councils, committees, advisory groups. And we have, uh, this is our, our organizational chart. So again, you see a very flat organization. And, um, and uh, I say pound for pound, uh, what we uh, can deliver as an organization with the amount of staff and resources we have uh, financial. We are, um, I'd hold us uh, up against anyone uh, in terms of the value that uh, members get. So uh, with that, I'll go to the next slide. You're gonna hear about some of these council committees. Membership is key uh, because we're largely funded by our membership. So that's in, uh, something that's very uh, important. And over the years, uh, we've been able to uh, grow the organization. We're actually approaching now, uh, we've, uh, Incredibly, in the last two weeks, uh, we've probably added, I'm going to say four, and some that have committed are, are joining in the next week or two um, organizations. So we, uh, we've really been able, we've been very aggressive in reaching out to new companies and new people. And uh, they've responded uh, because the value proposition that CABA provides is very real. Uh, with our 24 benefits. So we currently have uh, 376 members uh, as an international organization, but 11% are based outside North America. That's their actual office. That's not counting Siemens and Somfy and Schneider Electric, which have their head offices in Europe because um, we count them as North American, but, uh, but we continue, we have members all over the world. Our media contacts, our databases, um, we continually uh, drive to increase uh, the, the uh, people and contacts that we work with. And again, we're very, just over 29,000. So uh, really a tremendous uh, growth. We've added a new, uh, what we're calling a member referral program. And that's something that's uh, just being announced today in that, um, and we've had some really good people, David, David Katz, I'll give you a shout out that uh, you've been one that uh, without, <laughs> Uh, a, a good pat on the back. Uh, you've been always referring people. And uh, and so we thank uh, those members that have done that, but we actually want to go one step further. Uh, if anyone, uh, and we encourage everybody to uh, reach out to, uh, to people they know, companies they know, organizations that might uh, have value, might receive value by working with CABA. And uh, our best, uh, I guess, uh, group to advertise CABA and promote it are these 29,000 plus people. So if uh, you reach out and just talk to one person, just imagine the outreach. So we will provide a $100 gift certificate to, uh, a, you know, might be Amazon um, gift card uh, or um, $100 towards your membership renewal. Uh, if you actually uh, provide a name or contact that, uh, that generates a member. So uh, something new, we'll be promoting a little more fully uh, in the weeks to come. Next slide. Ron, Ron, can I say sure. something? Sure. Just to build on the membership, because I was going to ask you the question anyway. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you. That you, I've been in the booth at CABA, at TAB Expo, and both uh, Greg and I and your other associate at the Asherade just before the pandemic. And uh, what I'm suggesting is that we have a number of companies that came to the table and again, it's the fee structure, understanding it, you know, maybe there should be a first timer kind of thing. And also the universities and colleges who are cut back on budgets, but we have to engage them in the next wave for the students. So I just yep. think there may be some flexibility in the, in the membership structure, thanks. Yeah, and we do actually, a good point, we do a review every two years on the fee structure. We've made, a, we've made adjustments over, over the years. So this again shows, this slide shows uh, the level of uh, membership and the global reach. Uh, we virtually have our members, so whether it's uh, Microsoft as a board member, you know, the Siemens, the Honeywells, uh, and uh, many others uh, who are in virtually every developed country in the world. Uh, moving on. So we've been, uh, one of the ways that we've structured the organization, coming back to that organizational chart, we. We have, the organization has created three uh, key councils. We have other councils, advisory groups, task forces, but these are the three ones that reach out to uh, the, virtually every member can 
participate in these three councils. And we're going to go into in depth in uh, all of them. Uh, the CAB Information Council, of course, um, dealing with uh, a lot of the effort that we have towards our member research library, the Connect to Home Council, and the Intelligent Building Council. And um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Greg Walker, our research director, who's uh, uh, been working very diligently and uh, we've been growing these councils. So very incredible to see that and, and delightful. So Greg, turn it to you. Yeah, th thanks, Ron. And, and I'll give a, a, just a cursory overview of these uh, three councils, some of the initiatives that uh, that they're working on and the structure of those of those councils. I recognize a lot of the names that are on the call today. So um, many of you are already on these councils, uh, but if you're not, uh, feel free to reach out to CABA or myself, and we can uh, we can uh, point you to one of uh, these three councils at any time. Uh, these are uh, member only uh, benefits. So the first the first council is a is a, is kind of a unique one compared to the other two. Is it's our CABA Information Council? So CABA has the largest library of connected homes and intelligent buildings uh, research in the world. That we 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 gather and collect reports and uh, and pen papers and, and case studies and 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 things like that uh, and articles that uh, that we would peer review and vet and put into our CABA library. So this CAB Information Council is uh, led by Dr. Ken Wax, and they're the ones that uh, review these reports that to make sure that they're not marketing material or pushing an agenda or that they're making sure that they're applicable to CABA members as well. They write a, a short little blurb about the report and a description and then fill out uh, keywords as well. And each one of the, the reports that they complete, they receive $25 honorarium uh, for themselves. And, uh, and then also a $25, what we call CABA bucks, or essentially a credit uh, as well that would go to, to their membership. So in the, in the CABA library currently from 2017 to 2020, we have 1,038 reports and, uh, and articles uh, valued at around $4 million of, of research that available to CABA members. And then for 20 in, in 2020 uh, to date, we've added uh, 180 reports into that library. So if, if there's some interest in, in joining this group, there's around a, a dozen or so individuals that are re reviewing reports and there's a terms of reference and there's more details I can get into about uh, requirements. But uh, if anyone's interested, uh, feel free to reach out to myself or anyone ca at CABA um, and we can uh, provide you a little bit more information uh, via a call afterwards. And next, uh, we have our, 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 our two other councils. So the one is our Connected Home Council, which uh, obviously deals with residential uh, issues and projects. Uh, it's led by uh, the chair is uh, Roy Perry from Alarm.com. And we have uh, board members, um, Byron B. Miller from Semtech, uh, Jim Hunter from Delos, and Charles Hume from Southwire. This council represents uh, 191 uh, CABA member individuals, and they meet quarterly via webinar, and they discuss hot button topics in the industry, go over some white papers, they talk about some upcoming events, up upcoming projects and initiatives in the residential uh, space. The last, uh, the next slide, I'll, so this is the keynote presentations. So we, we do uh, at these webinars, which are, which are about an hour and a half long, there's a keynote presentation, which is always the highlight of these councils. And the, the one on September 2nd was on uh, connected home IoT cybersecurity guidelines, standards and verification systems. This was uh, on a white paper by the same name. Uh, had, we had three panelists and, and Jim Hunter was the, uh, uh, from Delos was the moderator. And more recently, on November 18th, we had one on digital building implementation and automation in the Marriott Sinclair Hotel, which was a very informative and well-received presentation on POE and lighting and, and a lot of energy uh, benefits and, and technology in uh, this uh, acclaimed uh, Sinclair Hotel, led by uh, Farouk and uh, Lewis uh, from the, the, the two that were responsible for implementing these technologies from uh, uh, Sinclair Holdings and Sinclair Digital, respectively. The next, we have um, our research project for the Connected Home Council, which is privacy and cybersecurity in the connected home. And we have these nine in, uh, companies that are on 
on the project so far and funding the research. Uh, this research is being done by Frost and Sullivan. It's expected to be completed uh, in um, mid-January, uh, mid to end of January. And this is a $130,000 research project and uh, you can join it for as little as uh, $3,000 and, and you'd get the full uh, research project and become one of the one of the funding organizations. And there's still opportunity to join this uh, project. If, uh, if there's anyone interested, uh, please feel to feel free to reach out to myself or, or CABA and we can uh, we can have a call uh, afterwards. Uh, next is a, a little bit about a CABA white paper program. We do a white paper program for both the Connected Home Council and through the Intelligent Buildings Council. And sometimes we do joint papers between both councils. These are volunteer uh, authors and volunteer working group members. Uh, these are both um, CABA members and non-members that can join the working groups of these particular papers. Um, we, we produce a few, a few of these white papers per year and all of them are downloaded and available for free to, to the industry at cabot.org slash white papers. And we also have a list of available uh, reports and that are underway that you can join the working groups of uh, as, as well. So if you're interested in either joining uh, a working group of an existing paper that's on the list or you want to propose a new white paper topic, uh, we can always find authors and, and find working group members uh, for, for these uh, research projects. These are really 10 to 20 page uh, literature review, secondary type uh, research, uh, as opposed to those larger uh, landmark research projects that uh, many of you are accustomed to. Some of the ones that uh, some of the white papers that are working on in the in our connected home council space. We recently completed one on wireless power. We have ones in, in progress on on POE and in uh, multi dwelling unit buildings and uh, one on, on human centric lighting. Another one on cybersecurity, and then a, a part two uh, one on uh, Li Fi. We completed a part one uh, recently, and the the POE one we completed part one as well. That's available on the website at cabot.org uh, slash white papers. Next, uh, I'll, I'll give a brief overview of uh, IBC that works similarly to the CHC and in terms of they meet quarterly via webinar, discuss issues and topics related to intelligent buildings as opposed to connected homes. This one, we have two board members. We have Terrence from IOTA and, and Trevor from uh, NRC on uh, this particular council. And it's led, the, the chair of the council is Trevor Nightingale from the NRC. So and you'll see uh, we have Harsha from Honeywell and, and, and two Bobs uh, from uh, Bob Lane Associates and then the Seaman Company. And we have 264 members uh, that are involved in this council. And uh, that's probably represents maybe 220 different companies in the space as well. And this is a CABA member only uh, benefit. So the two most recent keynotes, we did one on energy uh, and, and back in August from the NRC. And then uh, most, more recently one in November 16th on, uh, on also, also energy and uh, smart load shifting technologies in a, in, in, in a series of electrically heated homes. So. The next one is uh, our white papers for the IBC. So we're doing one, uh, we're completing the one on POE we recently completed. The same one was a joint paper on uh, wireless power. And then the ones that are in progress, we have one on uh, um, fire alarm systems and buildings, uh, a second one on the Li-Fi, it's a joint paper with the CHC. And then uh, a, a second version of a second paper on uh, automated shading as well. The two research projects that we have un underway uh, right now uh, on, for the IBC is our the one that recently completed uh, just uh, uh, last week uh, is our Intelligent Building Energy Management Systems Research Project. And we have a number of funders uh, on the screen here. If, if you see your name, we can provide you the, the full research uh, project and, and supporting slide decks and whatnot. Uh, the next project is our intelligent buildings and COVID-19 research, which is expected to be completed in mid-January. You'll see the, the funding funders are on the screen uh, here. This one's done by Frost and Sullivan. The previous one was done by uh, Harbor Research. Um, and if you, there's still opportunity to join this project if, you're, if your organization is, is investing and in, in, in learning and, and trying to get more knowledge about COVID-19, and you probably are, uh, this is a, a great project. We're doing uh, three different modules. The one module is available for free. 
uh, they decided to release that. It's a uh, free to download at uh, cabinet.org slash research. And the other two modules are only for the funding organization. So uh, you can get involved in this research project for as little as 6,000 and it's, it's around $100,000 of uh, a research project. project. Uh, feel free to reach out to myself uh, for more info. And the last project uh, on, on research that we're starting in, in 2021 uh, is a one on building automation control systems and a market sizing report. There was a lack of information out there on the size of the market and control systems. And so we reached out to uh, all the major control companies uh, in, in the space and we got uh, almost almost all the major players that are, are, are participating in this particular research project. This is really a, a multi-client boutique uh, research project, uh, invitation only project that we have uh, going on right now, uh, starting in uh, January 2021. And then uh, this is the last slide before I pass it off to Conrad to go over some of the uh, other initiatives that we're working on at CABA. And this one is a really a call for, uh, for research topics for 2021 uh, for our landmark research projects, whether it be residential for the CHC or large building for the IBC. Uh, the deadline to provide uh, suggestions is January 31st, uh, 2021. And you can email your suggestions to uh, walker at caba.org myself, or uh, we, we can discuss them right now and I can uh, put them on the list of uh, uh, of topics. The idea is we're going to be providing a short list of three topics to the CABA board of directors at the next board meeting in early 2021, and then they'll make their final selection, and then we'll go off into uh, developing a, a research perspectives and selecting a research firm and developing and, and completing it in the in 2021, the calendar year. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll open it up to the floor and see if there's any suggestions of, of potential topics, whether either residential or large building that uh, CABA should be undertaking in 2021. Greg, it's Ron. Maybe we could just have them hold that, that uh, thought and bring it up under the uh, new business and, uh, and uh, when we have that uh, open discussion so people can think about it and then hopefully bring up some, some great ideas that we could look at. Yeah, that, that works as well. And, or, uh, or if you also feel comfortable, you can always email me as well. Yeah, there's a, you can text it in. Perfect. Yeah. So with that, I'll, I'll pass it off to, to Conrad to go a little over a little bit of about uh, the CABA members library and some other uh, initiatives that we're working yeah. on. Actually, I'll jump in, Craig, uh, okay. uh, Greg, and and uh, take this first few, and then then Conrad <laughs> will take the, the heavy lifting <laughs> with our social media work. But in any case, uh, and uh, Greg's done an amazing job, and uh, Conrad, uh, you'll hear from him in a bit. We have such a great team, uh, a very professional uh, staff. Anyway, the uh, CABA Member Research Library, one of the key aspects of what CABA provides the industry, Greg talked about that, you know, the amount of research that's there is incredible. Uh, we really encourage, as a call to action, we encourage our members to um, take advantage of this and really uh, share that with other colleagues in your organization. And in some cases, uh, you have colleagues in different parts of the world. Anybody that's uh, part of your organization have the access to this. They have to let us know though, because uh, we have special passcodes that we provide. And that is an, um, a way that we track it and uh, monitor what research is being looked at. But uh, great research from European Union, uh, national labs and many sources, including white papers from our members. So send them to us if you have them. The other thing which not everybody's aware of, a uh, relatively new uh, aspect is that if your company organization works with dealers, distributors, integrators, uh, we do allow you, giving you as a company special passcodes, uh, usernames of passcodes that you can then share with them. They, they, they in turn, because of uh, their involvement with your company. So if you're Crestron and a member and you have those, which we know they do, they can then share that with um, with their dealers, uh, distributors and integrators as a way of actually helping educate the industry. It's, um, it's something that's uh, very valuable and many people take advantage of this. Uh, we also with the universities and uh, technical schools, we make it available to the students um, in those uh, educational facilities. Next slide. One of the ways that uh, CABA tries to uh, help, uh, again, in the educational front, 
because we don't uh, provide educational courses uh, directly uh, and certification as some other uh, sister associations. But we do actually provide a number of uh, complimentary webinars at CABA coordinates and our members can host but uh, part of what we do is uh, through an endorsement agreement we actually can give you added promotion and visibility to a much wider audience and uh, again through our twitter feed our linkedin and uh, different uh, mechanisms that we can our uh, news brief uh, there's a website we can really help promote so if you have um, webinars that you're doing that are educational uh, work with CABA and, um, and again, uh, through our website, you'll see many events, which you'll, next slide, uh, I think you'll see the, how many um, events and uh, webinars now, of course, that's uh, very big in this uh, COVID-19 era, but uh, we, we, we endorse actually over 100 events. And if we learn of an event that is of uh, particular interest, that could be of interest to any segment of our industry, we will post that. We pro I, I believe we have the most comprehensive listing of events uh, around the world uh, on our website. And as I say, we endorse, uh, you'll see our, our, our uh, special seal of approval on many events like these here. And what we're asking of, our, of the people that are on this uh, or listening to this later, please let us know. There may be events that you are involved in, you're speaking at, you're attending, you're hosting. Uh, let us know. Uh, we have actually many organizations that host events that are actual members of CABA. And uh, the Messy Frankfurts that form us, uh, the CSs and others who, who are uh, full-blown members of CABA and, uh, and we work with them. Next slide. And part of that effort is uh, our Ambassador Speakers Bureau. And uh, we have been blessed uh, uh, with uh, the fact that now there's over 80 of our member uh, contacts. And you have to be a member to be part of Ambassador Speakers Bureau. And uh, what we do is we make uh, probably every two weeks, we send them a list of usually three or four events. They're looking for speakers. They could be webinars or full blown uh, industry events, hybrid events that are starting to appear. And, uh, and so that's a value because um, even though our staff, myself, uh, uh, participate in many events as speakers, uh, there are far too many uh, opportunities. And so we are really trying to showcase the industry and bring uh, subject matter experts uh, to events that uh, are looking for these types of individuals. And we encourage the ambassador speakers to use uh, material that uh, that's in our uh, presentation section of the website because we uh, post the uh, presentations that say David Katz. Uh, David, I see you there right beside the reserve for you to the right. <laughs> And, uh, and, we, and, uh, and we'll post that there. And then we uh, encourage you to use our slides and encourage others to uh, use that with appropriate credit. So Next slide. This is David, Go ahead. can we send Go ahead. You back what we present so you can post what we took and, and what we added? Yes, yes, that's exactly right. And my previous question, just on webinars, uh, I've just watched an amazing webinar on IES lighting but it's recorded. So it, could we have you connect past webinars, usually these recordings? Yes, actually. Uh, and often uh, the ones that uh, we have posted are kept there so that uh, people can. Okay. Okay. Them. So yeah. it's not only the future promotion of webinars, yeah. but it's um, linking to somebody's, you know, yesterday yeah. webinar. Okay. Yeah. And, and if it's the right type of uh, thing, we'll put it in a news brief as well, uh, alerting people that it's there and it's of great value. Next slide. There's Steve, just uh, back, uh, if you don't know what Steve looks like, because we don't have the video on top <laughs> left -hand side is Steven. Uh, and you've got the Cabo logo behind you, Steven. So that's very impressive. Well, it's about <laughs> brand recognition. <laughs> Excellent. Anyway, Affinity Program. Uh, we work with over 20, 20 research firms, I think exactly 22 right now. And uh, and these research firms not only help us because they uh, bid through an RFP process on the landmark research, they help us write white papers. They provide uh, great uh, research, which we promote uh, to the industry through our news brief. And a number of them, actually four of them right now, have even offered discounts on their 
their standard research that they make available to industry. So as a CABA member, take advantage if you're if you see something that you want to buy or take it uh, purchase from them uh, take advantage of the affinity program we have arranged and uh, and get, take um, advantage of the discount so that's uh, another perk next slide the caba uh, marcom plan I, I mentioned earlier how active our board is and uh, one of the things that uh, deborah becker our former chair woman of the board uh, uh, brought into CABA early in her term as the chairwoman was uh, the creation and the enhancement of the the Marcom plan, the CABA Marcom plan. So basically, uh, through that effort, uh, there were three working groups created, uh, which you see here, uh, populated by just the CABA board members. In fact, one of the requirements of a CABA board member is you must serve on, uh, unless you're on the executive, you must serve on one or more. Some of them are actually serve on more than one. And, uh, and they actively meet and uh, refine and improve and recommend uh, great uh, enhancements to the work that CABA does in these three areas. And uh, I cannot say how much value CABA has uh, received from that. I mean, Brian from Reem, as an example, has been uh, so tremendous in, in giving great um, insight and, and uh, information back to the uh, CABA staff, for example, in our uh, work that we're doing on the uh, website and the search engine optimization. So I'm going to turn it over to Conrad McCallum, our um, communications director, our editor, and he's done so much work on our website and database. So uh, Conrad, uh, over to you. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, the first slide there, um, that's really looking at the uh, the first the that first committee that focuses on um, positioning CABA as a as a leading resource for uh, industry research and. Um, and one of the strategies there is, is to, to promote the teaser content from um, the white papers and, uh, and the downloadable portions of the, uh, of the reports. Um, so there's some examples there. And, and included with that is the sharing of the, uh, of the research content at um, industry events. And over the, uh, over the past eight months, it's been uh, Virtual events. Um, we also had the opportunity, as you, through our like uh, uh, as contact brokers, that when we are not able to participate in an event, we we can sometimes suggest speakers um, through the ambassadors and speakers bureau. Um, so that we're always looking for. Uh, we already have a, a few uh, conferences uh, lined up um, in in 2021 where we we can um, help to profile the the research again. And next slide. Um, and so uh, this is also re uh, relating to um, uh, uh, research recruitment and uh, promotion. Um, we, we've been very aggressive in promoting our, um, our webinars um, on, on social media. And, and, we, and we have the, uh, the CABA LinkedIn group, the main LinkedIn account and, and, and Twitter. And we've we, we've had um, a number of people come to the website from these invitations and they check us out and they find that uh, in, in some cases, these are prospects and they are, they're interested in, um, after a couple of visits, they're interested in um, checking us out and, and, and potentially joining. Um, so the webinar promotions for IBC and CHC is, is, is huge for us. Um, in addition to that, we have, we've had um, press releases uh, to announce um, you know, the new uh, new board members that have come on and recently, uh, uh, Ron had mentioned Belimo and uh, and Graybar have come on board uh, in the last couple of months. Um, we've had we've had promotions around um, the Smart Home as a Service report and as well as the uh, Intelligent Buildings and COVID nineteen mo module one, and uh, the, these. Um, these have been distributed through, and they've been picked up by uh, industry publications. And uh, we're um, we're always um, looking for those uh, opportunities to leverage um, the the uh, digital resources and uh, website platforms. And when 
when when the firm uses a PR um, agency, we're always looking to to take those opportunities as well. Um, particularly for, for when we have a, a board member announcement. Um, there's another example of snackables there, um, shout outs for, uh, for new members that have, that have joined. Next slide. Um, uh, and here, here we're, we're looking at kind of focused on that, um, that, that third uh, working group really, it's, it's membership, um, membership retention and recruitment. Some examples there where we're really we're we're trying to um, profile the 24 CABA benefits for industry. Um, many of them are uh, are for non-members and prospects. Some of them are are reserved for members. Uh, and one example here is the uh, the opportunity to do um, compare um, marketing. Um, your, your marketing strategies against um, your, your peers, your organizational peers in the industry. Um, we've we promoted that um, over the last quarter. Um, we're um, with the website uh, overhaul. We launched the uh, the website in July, and we're we're continuing to improve it um, through uh, SEO work, and uh, we we've. We've also added some kind of discrete uh, contact pop-ups on the website and um, contact forms, and uh, all that information um, is is useful to us in in um, approaching um, approaching prospects and, and 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 keeping tabs on on what's um, what's popular, um, what content is getting the most traffic on the website. There's two examples there. The um, the COVID research project and the recent um, uh, wireless power transfer uh, white paper with the new cover design. Next slide. Um, and we have, uh, and, and this, this slide is really focused on the building awareness and external relations component of the, uh, the working groups. So you have one, uh, one committee that fo focuses just on that. There is a large amount of overlap, you know, when we're talking about SEO and expanding our, our digital presence. But really, what this this gets to is the opportunity to share, um, to to join in the uh, the peer networking, uh, the contact brokering um, that can take place, and and to link with us on um, on our, our social media. Um, so we have these. Um, these opportunities with you know kind of large large associations as there's an example here uh, IFMA sort of giving us a shout out for uh, for being a, an association partner for the World Workplace event uh, we have the CES um, Consumer Technology Association uh, library they even, they include our um, the uh, executive summaries of the reports that they've been involved with in their library as well. So we, wherever we can amplify those kind of partnerships in, in promoting our um, research and information and uh, networking opportunities, we, we do that. And just to, um, to close out um, kind of as a, a call to members that, you know, if you, uh, if you haven't looked, haven't stopped by the CABA LinkedIn group, um, Please do so, and um, and and uh, you're you're welcome to share um, news from your uh, corner of the industry. There's there's um, there's just under uh, 2,400 members uh, uh, in the LinkedIn group, and uh, the LinkedIn corporate account is just under thousand uh, thousand members. Um, many of us often hear about us first uh, as prospects through the uh, the cabin news brief, and. Um, as a, as part of that, we've added uh, the the Cabot Journal. Uh, the the weekly posts are included in the in that Thursday newsletter. Um, so uh, we encourage everyone to subscribe to the uh, to the newsletter, and and uh, everyone is invited, of course, to to pitch articles for the for the journal. We have had some. Um, generally, it's been members, but occasionally we we have had those that have come in and submitted very good content. And after after submitting the content of the journal, they've come back and 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 uh, they've looked at uh, our association. They found that this is this is really a, it's an opportunity for us in terms of um, the contacts that we can create, and we need to we need to join. So um, uh, do have a look at those opportunities, and uh, we're we're con continuing to to um, 
to shape uh, all of these resources and uh, try to improve on them. I think that's I think that's uh, the end of my portion. But if there's any questions, yeah, no, great. Um, thank you, Conrad. Thank you, Ron and Greg. I think it's a great summary. Um, you know, I think Ron, we've got a few minutes left, and um, just real quick to close, I think you know um, we we've done a good job, kind of really pivoting this year and embracing not only our foundation um, of, of solid research and relevant content, but but bringing that research insight and content forward and, and outwards uh, to be be leaders in, in, in the digital age of, of collaboration and socialization um, of, of the knowledge and, 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 and research and content we, we generate as an association and, and collaborate uh, across uh, not only our membership, but across industry professionals as a whole. So uh, great summary and overview. And with that, um, I'll open it up quickly for new business and questions. David, David Katz here, yeah. if I may uh, just ask uh, to clarify the uh, Educational Council. And it's in context that uh, I've just sent Greg a proposal we've made to this, uh, working with Seattle uh, Smart Building Center, they want to make a second center open. We're trying to get that into Toronto. So what is the Educational Council's goal as to uh, either new revenue sources from educational programs or how, how what is the purpose? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump out on that one. Uh, it's Ron. And basically, we don't have the council in place yet. But as you know, David, we work with so many uh, great technical schools uh, and universities, uh, University of Illinois and, uh, you know, Centennial College and others. Uh, but basically, Laney College and California, we're actually chatting with them. But our intent is that we believe there's an opportunity to put together a specific um, kind of subject matter groups and the educational sector is a, is a, is a great one to start with because there's a, uh, the work that they do in training education, whether it be people for the intelligent building sector, building automation, uh, whether it's cybersecurity, uh, you know, 5G, uh, cybersecurity, all those things that they're doing and uh, should do more of, and, and hopefully not to reinvent the wheel, that they can share best practices and knowledge and curriculum. So the intent is to actually form that uh, as one of uh, uh, the new councils that we can have where they can come together and uh, collaborate and share. So that, so that, that, that would fit nicely into our smart building center, which will be with Ryerson and uh, potentially, or George Brown. Yeah. Uh, and, and goes back to the executive, you know, the training paper that we wrote that is significant as to the next wave of people to bring them into this industry. In the interest of time, I'll just mention two things. Uh, in terms of the research, I think the uh, IIBC should look at artificial intelligence as it relates to, uh, you know, fault detection and the BAS. Uh, Erie Scoping is working with others on artificial intelligence in the built space. And then for the Home Council, I would suggest this issue of aging in place. We'd had a report about five years ago, but... I think in light of what I saw yesterday from the health ministers, it's not about putting people in long-term care. It's about giving them the technology they can stay at home. So those are two ideas I sold you. Great. Thank you, David. And, and just on that, that I believe, uh, Greg, on the next uh, Connected Home Council, uh, the University of Illinois is going to be sharing their uh, new re their new center. <laughs> yeah, they're doing a and they're the, the focusing smart on aging. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's focusing on aging in place, and uh, it's a really a research center on uh, connected home technologies. And there's an observatory inside the yeah. this uh, this home that they built specifically to look at uh, connected technologies for the aging population. So uh, it's, it's a lots of it's a it's definitely a hot button topic, and uh, it's going on the list. Uh, David, yeah. thanks. Great, and I'll just add the the Green Building Initiative had a great webinar on uh, COVID and the design of uh, homes for for that. So I'll send the link to you. Great. Perfect. Uh, Stephen, one member who couldn't uh, join, but uh, wanted to uh, bring this forward, uh, Larry Silverman, some of you know Larry uh -huh. or Lawrence. Anyway, uh, he indicated that uh, there often are people in our industry that are, he calls them the unsung hero. He's, he's, he's saying that maybe Cabot should look at an unsung hero award 
uh, which uh, when we uh, get back to face-to-face -to -face, uh, uh, opportunities at certain industry events, CABA could hold like an award dinner or dinner, or even a fundraiser dinner to with the money going to specific things that CAB is working on and um, and honor people. He, he's uh, offered up Bob Lane. A lot of people know uh, Bob Lane and Robert Lane for the work he's done with CAB at industry and um, uh, over many many years. So he's saying there's a there's an example of a person that uh, you know could be recognized. But in any case, I, I said I would bring that up. Uh, to the to the group and it's something that the board can look at uh. yeah yeah i think that's a great suggestion so we'll take that and please include that as part of our next um uh, discussion uh, with the board here the, uh, just after the first of the year and and i would also say you know kind of a call to action to all of us um in collaboration uh, particularly now with so much um comfort and and experience with with virtual um and, and non-virtual but uh, virtual tools uh, you know we would love to see your your thoughts on uh, collaboration events, think tanks, um, and and roundtable type discussions that we can have um, as 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 commonly interested groups around issues that are relevant to our industry um, and relevant and pertinent to the research we're doing. So um, please share those thoughts with you as you have them, because I think one of the benefits of uh, of Kava is this amazing amazing wealth of knowledge, and, and how do we continue to sh share that to benefit the industry as a whole. Any other uh, orders of new business or questions? If not, we'll adjourn. Yeah, and uh, I just want to, uh, it's Ron, just to echo that, uh, that we uh, continue to, uh, on the leadership uh, with Stephen, uh, the executive committee and the board uh, are doing some great things for the industry. And uh, we wish everyone certainly uh, to be safe <laughs> and healthy, and uh, and over these uh, upcoming holidays, to uh, take some time with uh, uh, family and friends. So we we wish you best, and we thank you sincerely because your support is what uh, has made CABA what it is today. And we uh, we truly thank you for that, and uh, wish you the best in 2021, and continue uh, want to continue to work with you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Ron and the team. And thank you all as members for taking time and spending time with us and being a part of this great organization. So uh, thank you. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you all. Thank you. Happy, Happy New Year. Year.